Hey, what's up, Serena? Pia here from thriftdiving.com. So today we are going to be painting this old fence behind me. If you've been following my channel, you would know that I've pressure washed this fence in the past. I was supposed to paint it, but I never got around to it. Well, today we're actually gonna be using a product by Wagner. This is sponsored by them. It's an airless paint sprayer. So stick around, I'll tell you a little bit more about that. So if you've got projects that you're doing outdoors and you really don't want to be using a paintbrush or a roller, and I really hope that I pick the right color of paint because I think I made a mistake. And by the time you buy three gallons of paint in the wrong color, <laughs> They don't let you return that. So we are going to hopefully like the color that we selected. Let's get to this project right now. So this was the first step that I was not looking forward to. I'm telling you, pressure washing this, I've done it before. I know it takes forever. My back was gonna hurt the next day. But if you've got a fence or a deck that you're trying to paint or stain, you can't skip this step. Like you've gotta do it. You gotta put in the hard work and you gotta get it to a nice clean surface in order to paint it. All right, so we have some of it done, but it's gonna take a long time to get this entire thing done. But you can see the results are like amazing. There's like a lot of green stuff here, but now we've got a much cleaner fence so that we'll be able to paint this. <sighs> so you hear the frustration in my voice, right? <laughs> This took probably about three hours to get it really clean. I had to go in between the boards to get to the ones hidden underneath. But once I completed it, I let it dry for about 24 hours. Thankfully, we didn't have any rain. And then when it was all dry, it was time to spray it. And if you've ever used a paint sprayer around the house for DIY projects inside or outside, you know it's a pain when you're trying to mix water and paint to get the right viscosity. Well, this one, it doesn't require that. This is the Wagner Control Pro 130, the power tank sprayer. They sent this to me to try out for this fence and I like that it came with everything inside that I needed, but you do need some other materials. So make sure you've got an extension cord. I have one that's about 100 feet long because I'm doing all the way in the back of my yard, but you'll also need a overflow bucket, a wrench. You can get the materials list down below in the blog post. Now it comes with a spray gun. It does have a locking clip there so you don't accidentally spray yourself. That's very, very dangerous. So keep your hands and your body parts out of the way and keep that gun locked. It was super simple to set this up, but I realized in going through the instructions that this was actually a five-step process in using a paint sprayer, prime, prime, test, test, and then project. So the first thing I had to do was turn the knob to prime, put a little bit of water in, and then run this water through the system to prime it with water. This is something you have to do every single time you use this paint sprayer. So if you just remember prime, prime, test, test, project. <laughs> this was the easiest way for me to remember how to do this. And you'll see that I've got this overflow bucket here. This is making sure that I catch the water. You'll want to make sure that when you are doing this with your paint, this is the paint that I chose, that you've got that little overflow bucket right underneath that hose when you're now doing the second part of the step, which is priming the system with paint. Because if you turn this on and then you don't have that bucket there, guess what? It will shoot out everywhere. Ask me how I know. <laughs> I let it run for about five seconds, but one word of advice, use something that doesn't have a small opening like this. I tried it and found that it was a bit messier, so definitely stick with something that has a wide opening because it makes less mess and it's easier to clean up. So once the priming with the water and paint was done, it was time to move on to step three, unlocking the spray gun and running the paint through the spray gun, making sure that it actually worked. So I did that for maybe just a couple of seconds and then locked that baby. And then it was time to put the spray guard and the tip on. And now we're ready for step four, which is the spray test. So we're gonna test out this paint sprayer on the board. You always wanna do a test as your final step before your project. And we also wanna make sure that we're going at an angle, a 90 degree angle from the ground. We don't wanna tilt it like this. And we also wanna make sure that we overlap it by, I believe 50%. So let's go ahead and do a test. Turn it sideways. All right, let's see how this goes. Whoa. Helps to turn it on. Whoa! <laughs> Not only does it work really good, but it sprays everything on the ground. So I think we're gonna have to get some sort of cover up for the, <laughs> for the ground. This thing is awesome. But you can see that I've got some runs here and it looks like um, that's when 
the power wasn't on. Um, but overall, this looks like a really smooth finish. Oh my gosh, this is gonna take like five minutes. <laughs> but let's get something to put on the ground because I do believe we're gonna probably have a little bit of overspray. All right. Yes, Serena, you gotta protect the ground. <laughs> you can use cardboard, contractor's paper, newspaper, anything, as long as you just have something there to protect it from the little bit of overspray. This model of paint sprayer actually has about 55% less overspray, so it still does a good job, but you will have a little bit. Make sure you protect any furniture, any adjoining walls or anything. You'll notice that I'm moving with the paint sprayer too, and that helps to get a good finish. And I was also monitoring how much paint was in the tank because if it runs out, and when you put new paint in there, you have to reprime the system each time. And I wanted to save time by not having to do that. So I just made sure that I always had paint in there, that it didn't run out, and then I could keep going. You'll notice that I'm also spraying from side to side, horizontal. It's easy to go from vertical to horizontal and back and forth because you just have to lock the spray gun and then you can easily turn the spray guard to the horizontal position and it's pretty simple. And when you wanna be vertical again, just put it back into position. Now, if you're spraying and you get a clog, you just turn the tip to the back, give the handle a squeeze a little bit to clear that clog and then turn that tip back forward. Now, thankfully I didn't have any clogs, but I did have a little bit of a problem like, do I put something here to prevent overspray from getting on my neighbor's fence? Let's try this piece of cardboard. Oh no, it fell in between the fence. What am I gonna do? Well, I just decided I'm just gonna keep spraying and I figured it was only the tip, so I should be okay if the little bit of paint got on the tip of the other fence, right? <laughs> anyway, it didn't really take me very long to finish. I didn't time myself, but I think it probably took maybe about an hour. It, you know, I did stop and do a little bit of pruning because some of the shrubs, the trees that were close to the fence would have gotten in the way, but overall it didn't take a lot of time. And while I was finishing up the fence, Hubby came out with the cultivator and tried to at least clear some of the weeds away in this, this area. This is not really a great way to remove all of the weeds because I know that we're releasing a lot of seeds and this could be even more problematic going forward because we're gonna put a little vegetable garden here. And I do think we were in a rush because we just wanted to get this project done and get the plants in the ground. So we actually skipped putting weed block. I do regret that part, but I'm hoping that some of the mulch that I later get for this area will help to protect it from weeds. But anyway, we brought in some soil just to help condition the soil a little bit, mix that in with the cultivator, and then later we're gonna do some planting, but first we needed to add some planters here because you know, you can't have a nice pretty fence without flowers hanging from it, right? So five and a half cans of paint later, it was time to clean up the paint sprayer. I put it in the prime position and then turned the spray tip back towards me and just gave the handle a squeeze a little bit just to remove some of that pressure. This is the depressurization you have to do before you start cleaning up everything else. So I emptied the rest of the paint, the remaining paint back into one of the cans and gave myself about 20 minutes to clean this up. This isn't something that you clean up in about five minutes. You really wanna make sure you remove as much of the paint as possible. So I started by cleaning out the hopper. This is the tank that you want to get completely clean because we're gonna be filling this up with fresh water to run through the system to make sure that it's completely clean. So the first thing I did was ran the water through the spray gun. You wanna make sure that all that paint is out of there. When it starts to run clear, now you can turn it to prime and finish running the rest of the water through that tube. And I also felt that it was helpful to have a small bristle brush because it helped to get the paint out of the nooks and crannies. So the next day it was time to move on to actually planting these fruits and vegetables and things that we bought. This is the first time we've ever planted in the ground. If you saw my previous video, I've done garden beds, but I've never planted directly in the ground. So I'm kind of a newbie here. Any gardening advice you have, I would greatly appreciate it. But one thing we needed to do was make sure that the cats and the wildlife don't get in. So we did put a little bit of a fence around it. And then I also cut some of that fencing in half and installed some of it above the fence because, you know, cats can climb. <laughs> and typically they tend to walk along the top of this fence. So I didn't want them to climb down into the garden. So crossing my fingers that this actually helps keep them out. And I also did some spray painting of garden stakes so that I could remember where things were planted so I didn't step on them. So what started out as really kind of not really an eye-catching part of our yard, just, you know, a lot of weeds growing, is now this beautiful little garden with a fence that just draws your attention. The color is so beautiful, and I love that I was able to get it done just really in about an hour or two. And 
I was so worried about the color that I thought it wouldn't work. But now I see that it all came together in the end and I'm so happy. And I really thought there wouldn't be enough sunlight here in the back. But after spending some time out here, we definitely have enough sunlight. And the guy in the back who was building the little chicken coop, he's like, I love your fence color. And we're like social distancing. Love your chicken coop. <laughs> So if you want more information about how you can do your fence, your deck, using this Wagner Control Pro 130, you can find a link down below. I highly recommend it. It helped me get the job done much faster. And I'm thinking that this is a great part of our yard. You can find a link down below to their website, which is wagnerspraytech.com. You can find links to all of the tools and materials that I used down below. And keep with me because I'm going to be doing more outdoor stuff now. I feel like I can focus on the grass. You see my little auto mower busy at work there. But we've got some other projects that we're going to be doing. So if you love thrift diving, you love making your home look beautiful and doing it yourself, keep watching and I'll see you next video.